So uh, we've just made our first, uh, you know, asynchronous uh, function program that, you know, we just made this one. The thing is that it just solves all the ideal cases. It does not solve the cases where there are errors. Now, in the real world, there are errors, okay? So uh, we need to check if maybe, you know, the URL is wrong or if uh, we are trying to compress it in a format that is wrongly provided by the user or if we are trying to upload it to a wrong server and so on and so forth. So uh, what uh, uh, we are going to do is we will have to pass these errors also into our callbacks and for that Node.js has this concept called error co first callbacks which is a standard way in which uh, we design callbacks in Node.js. Of course uh, there is no uh, no such rule inside the Node.js language that errors have to be the first argument they can be the second but it's a convention that almost everybody in the Node.js ecosystem follows is that when we make our callbacks then the first argument is supposed to be the error and if this error is null then only it means that the rest of the data is successfully returned so uh, there is a very nice article uh, on the blog of uh, fred scott on uh, why these error first callbacks have existed uh, this is a style of writing program that exists uh, from before the language javascript itself called continuation passing style in which we write callbacks so uh, this is how we define an error first callback we write an error is the first argument the next argument is what we are supposed to return okay so um, in fact these libraries that we discussed uh, before like yazl and axios and request and uh, s3 they all use error first callbacks as well okay so uh, let's just think of what can be our cases for error the first thing that could be a case of error is that if uh, no, uh, not url dot you know starts with uh, http so if it does not start with http in that case we want to provide an error so what we will do is we will call downloaded and we will call it with a new error uh, and i will pass this message into the error that uh, you know uh, url must start with uh, you know http something like this okay uh, now, uh, in the case of the successful case, what I'm going to do is I will have to pass null for the error and then uh, pass saved file so that uh, where we are accepting this arguments, we know that the first argument is error, the second is our data and so that, you know, your callback stack starts looking a lot like, you know, uh, like this. Uh, error one data one the second callback has error two data two and like that okay so uh, let me just uh, put these kind of error checks everywhere let's check if the format is correct or not while compressing and let's check if the server is correct or not uh, when we are you know uploading okay so let's see Okay, so we have these errors, uh, we check if it starts with HTTP or not, or so, uh, otherwise we provide an error. We check if the format is 7-zip gzip or 7-z or not, otherwise we provide an error. We check if the upload server is FTP or not, and we provide an error. Uh, okay, so now uh, the way we are handling these uh, details should also now uh, change. Uh, let's see what we're going to do about that. So uh, what we can do is one thing that we can do is uh, check if there is an error and if there is an error then throw that error uh, inside each of these uh, callbacks. Okay, so let's just see what happens when I try to run this right now. We are downloading it and then uh, we are uh, compressing it and then uh, we're trying to upload. Uh, okay, um, in fact, this I think upload statement. Uh, what we need to do is when uh, we have these errors in that case we should not execute the rest of the function as well this should not you know take place afterwards okay uh, so what we'll do is put a return line here everywhere uh, uh, 
okay so that way what will happen is that in this case we had this error but since the user was doing nothing with this error here and we just continued executing this this should not have happened so if there is something to be you know errors to be supposed to be thrown we'll just call set timeout like that uh, just a second um, So we have got this you know downloading and then we got compressing and uh, we got uploading image and uploading image this function did not end uploaded was not reported back to us so we should uh, like if i write if error and throw error line here as well then we would see that error coming back to us so the downloading task ends and then the compression ends and after that uploading starts and then we get this error we can only use ftp for our servers we get the entire call stack for our error uh, and we can find out where this error happened it happened in line number you know 51 so we will go to line number 51 see that okay this is where the error happened further back we will see it happened in uh, line number 35 so line number 35 this is where you know this error happened so we should not deal with that now if i change this to ftp uh, then uh, these errors will you know start going away now what can happen sometimes is that uh, we we may or may not be able to continue with our execution after the error now some errors might be critical if i have I was not able to download the file then my entire script ends but if i was not able to compress the file because of some reason then what i can do is i can you know uh, upload the uncompressed file itself into the server so let's say if i uh, pass uh, some uh, compression algorithm say lzip now lzip is not supported in our program so if i try to do this what will happen is that just after downloading ends we get a compression error that we only support these files now what instead of throwing this error what i can do is that if there is an error then uh, we'll do console dot uh, warn this error and uh, afterwards uh, we will uh, uh, do this uh, you know archive uh, instead of upload with this archive what we will do is take this file name here okay so uh, uh, let uh, data equal to uh, if there is an error then we will do console dot one error and uh, we'll do is uh, take archive equal to uh, this file that comes from here file put it here okay uh, then what, hap what will happen is that uh, when this error uh, arrives here in this uh, condition in this case right so in this case uh, the value of archive is undefined so what I do is I put set the value of the file from the download function into archive which means that when I'm going to upload it if uh, you know if the error had occurred uh, in that case uh, the error would be shown on the screen but i will pass the file instead of the archive into the uploading function okay so let's just check out what happens here okay so I start uh loading it and so it's downloads the file so we get this error we only support uh savage zip etc and this error is printed to the screen but we upload image.jpg to file.com and finally ftp file.image.jpg now instead of that if i was using uh, gzip then it would have compress the file and then uploaded it okay so it compresses the file and it's uploading the compressed file here but if i am uh, using a compression scheme that is not supported then uh, the error would be printed to the screen but still you know the rest of the code will continue working so you can either you know stop execution at the error by throwing that error or you can you know handle the error in a certain way that you want to use so now our uh, code looks a lot like what production level code actually looks like uh, most of these uh, callbacks should also be, you know, uh, uh, what you call uh, optional in nature. So to make these callbacks optional, so you'll see that a lot of these uh, uh, libraries like fs, this library here, the callbacks are not optional. Uh, if it were optional, it would be written in square brackets like this. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of libraries where the callback is optional. If you want to make the callback optional, then you should uh, check if. Uh, this variable ex exists uh, downloaded variable you know exists and it is of type of function then only we should execute these two lines of code so that's up to you whether you want to do that or not but yeah i mean uh, this uh, gives us a proper callback function where the errors are supported um, 
and as we can see that there's a problem because things are nested uh, very highly uh, we're going to see in the next video that what we can improve uh, this using something called promises okay